everyone. So today we're going to be discussing the difference between a real arrowhead and a fake arrowhead. Because, well, let's be honest now, when you're talking about Indian artifacts, there are a lot of unscrupulous people out there that will sell you anything. So, best piece of advice is to stick with less than three inches as far as size, unless you're going with a reputable dealer and you have certificate of authenticity or COA papers. That's the in general rule of thumb, but let's discuss some things that you should actually look out for should you be considering purchasing real arrowheads. Now, the first thing I want to show is if we look, can you tell me why this one is fake? And can you tell me why this one is fake? Compared to real ones. There's a drill bit from my other one I did where I talked about it. And this here is a broken find. So we have examples of real compared to examples of fake and the one thing that you want to look for first and foremost is symmetry so on the fake one they're usually perfect where a real one not so perfect the real ones i mean you're talking people that were using other stones and deer antler and whatever they have available to them in order to chip them or nap them, that's the proper term, is napping, compared to modern tools where people would use, people use oftentimes grinders, drill presses, stuff like that. So the first thing you want to look for is symmetry. If it's too perfect, well, it's just too perfect. <laughs> the next thing you want to look for too is, um, the size is already covered. Because here's a fun little fact. When the Europeans came to America, we the Indians actually laughed at us and said we were long knives. And that was considered an insult. And the reason it was is because most of the Indians, their actual knives were small. Big ones, such as this, are actually fairly uncommon that's why this is a fake most of what they used was smaller and this and this are both technically knife blades um because if you look at the symmetry of them you look at how they're shaped and everything well it doesn't make much sense to be pulling those back on a bow even larger ones such as this again knife technically not arrowhead but even passing this off as arrowhead you got to look at what would be realistic on it what would be the purpose of such stuff down here really wouldn't be any now the other thing is too on these which are fake down here look at how they're both identical as far as both sides in here and that wouldn't be true at all. Because keep in mind, they're using deer antler in order to get the notches. And if we look at the fake one right, or if we look at the broken one right here, compared to the fake one, look how large this is. Because keep in mind, they still had to wrap it. And you're using materials that were available. So it makes a pretty big difference. Now, the other thing is too, on, the fake ones. Fake ones are always sharp. And the reason they're sharp, because they were just made. If you look at originals, let's grab this one for example again, extremely dull. And that makes sense because you're talking about an artifact that laid in the ground for hundreds of years. So when an artifact lays in the ground for a hundred of years, the earth is always moving. And because the earth is always moving, it's going to rub and it's going to dull. 
We've all been to a graveyard before, actually it's like my favourite place to go walk around, it's a cemetery. And if you look at tombstones, just natural weather wears and over time it becomes duller, harder to read. Well, it's the same thing on artefacts. Much duller. Where this is actually sharp and the points up in here, sharp. <coughs> Speaking of dirt, that's the other that giveaway when we are considering what is a real arrowhead compared to a fake arrowhead. Now, let's use my drill bit as a good example here. So as you can see in here, there's a lot of still dirt. If you put it, if you take your loop or you look under any kind of magnifying glass, it's really easy to see where the dirt was, how the yes, it did lay under the ground. If you're looking at fake arrowheads, there's no trace of dirt. And there would be, because while well, they did fake some of the cracks and lines up in here, but there is zero example of any dirt. So it was never actually in the ground. Because you can't you can't exactly fake that. You have to at least, I don't know, get it dirty or something. So bad fake as far as the dirt goes. And the other point too. As far as finding arrowheads, what makes them actually rare is, well, <laughs> they're old and you have to find them. When we consider the attrition of human nature, we create fields, we plow fields, we build buildings, blah, blah, blah. 90% of the time when you're actually out looking for arrowheads, you find stuff like this. Would have been very nice, except, well, gee, in comes a tractor blade and there you go. <laughs> broken arrowhead. So they actually have an example of an arrowhead, because keep in mind we're talking arrow, not knife blade. Well, what would be the point of it being this large and also to the fact that, well, you find it and then you get it on eBay for $16. Kind of sketchy, right? <laughs> so anyhow, there's my little examples of how you can tell a fake one from a real one because there are a lot of differences and hopefully you won't make that mistake i got these because i'm actually giving them to my niece and well she'll find them in the ground and hopefully she doesn't see my youtube video and find it you know <laughs> that they're actually not real but you know makes her a fun afternoon right so anyhow hope you enjoyed my video and be sure to subscribe and like and now you know the difference between real arrowhead and fake arrowhead thanks everyone